Hi everyone, Timmy from vMix, and today we're going to continue our series called Getting Started with vMix. Now in the previous videos, we've covered installation, interface, adding an input, creating a production, recording, and streaming. And today we're going to cover a lot of the frequently used features of vMix. And they all include things like presets, shortcuts, and vMix call. So let's get started. Okay, so we're not actually going to open vMix right now. What we're going to do is we're going to double click on a preset that we've created. So I've created and saved this preset here, and if I double click on it, it will open up vMix for me with my entire production ready to go. So here we are. This is the vMix Funtime Live Show preset, pretty much. We have about 20 to 30 uh, inputs ready to go. So up the top left-hand corner, as we mentioned, you can set up presets. So when you first create your vMix production, it will create a new preset for you. So if you save that, give it a name, and then you can save it incrementally as you build your production. Once you've finished, you can uh, save it again uh, or give it a different name and then next time you want to load it up in vMix you just double click that uh, input or you can open it from the open menu and then you're able to go through and use the production that you had ready to go. Okay, so you'll notice that we, you know, we have 20 to 30 inputs. Um, I can change the size of the input section by dragging this up and down. It will depend on the size of the monitor that you have. So if you've got a smaller monitor, you may not be able to move it around too much. Um, and you can also minimize your inputs by right-clicking on the title and then opening it up again um, by right-clicking. And you could move the audio mixer as well if you wanted to create a little bit more space uh, down here in the input section. You also notice that you can categorize things in vMix. So if I right-click these color categories here, I can create different categories for vMix. So the gray one will always have all of your inputs. So I've just titled that one main, and then I've got videos and titles. So if you had a lot of videos that you needed access to, but you didn't want to share it with your cameras and audio, you can move them into a video section that will just have these videos for easy access. And same things for things like titles. So if you want to move uh, something into a category, you can just pick it up and drag it into it. So as you can see here, now Martin has appeared. Now if I don't want that there anymore, I can just drag it back into the main one. Now you'll notice if I go to a video, say for instance this one, you'll see that it's red here in the, the gear icon. Now that means that it is associated with the red category. And you can, you can also see this by uh, attaching a category to it here in the input settings. Now one of the most important things about vMix is the ability to create shortcuts. So I can set up shortcuts on my keyboard here. Um, I can use a MIDI device. So any MIDI capable device that can plug in via USB, you can use that in vMix. Or any X keys controller, pretty much. So we cover pretty much all of the X keys controllers as well. So when we do our live production like this one, we have a lot of different shortcuts set up ready to go. Um, and I'll show you how to access that now. So you can go to settings and then shortcuts, or you can use this button down here in the bottom right hand corner, which will display all of your shortcuts. So as you can see, we have a lot of shortcuts set up to do a lot of different things. So they're mainly cut transitions. So when I press a button, it cuts to a video. We don't typically don't preview it. Uh, we just send it straight to the, uh, the output. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of different things. We have things for overlays, we have for our titles, um, and audio for our microphones. So they're really easy to set up. So if I go to Add um, and click Find. So if you have, have a MIDI device or an X keys, you hold down the key here and it will associate it with it. So I'm going to hold down the space uh, on my keyboard and then we're going to select a function. Now you have up to 300 functions you can choose. Anything from a transition to make a video appear live, right down to, you know, PTZ control um, or overlays or anything like that. There's a whole lot of different things you can do. So we're just going to do a fade um, and we're going to just use the preview, which means it will go from preview. Uh, anything in the preview will go to the output. So we'll just do that. We'll go OK. And then you'll see it here. Go OK again. And now I'm just going to hit the space bar. As you can see, it's faded. If I press it again, it'll fade back. So you can use that for preview to output, um, but then you can also use it for setting up pretty much anything you want. So if we go to the shortcut section, we can edit this. So as you can see, all this stuff is edited, but we don't want to use the preview. We want to actually go to a specific video. So we'll switch to um, this NDI news video and we'll go OK. So if I press the space bar now, it's going to fade to that NDI video. So that's a really quick look at shortcuts. Uh, you can also create things called activators. And for MIDI devices and X keys, you can create lights that will appear or flash 
um, depending on what you're doing in vMix. So you can set that and assign it up to each uh, shortcut or button. So we have full videos on how to do shortcuts and activators. Um, I would definitely recommend checking those videos out to see how they work. And triggers as well. We mentioned triggers in a previous video. Uh, triggers allow you to set up shortcuts type functions on each individual input. So check out the triggers video as well. So now we're going to talk a little bit about NDI. Now NDI stands for Network Device Interface and it's a protocol that's been developed by NewTek. Now what it does is it allows you to send and receive video over a local network. So if I connect up a camera to my vMix production here, I can then see it over the local network in another vMix production or another software or piece of hardware that supports NDI. So we're going to show you how to set up an NDI source uh, in vMix now. So if I go to Add Input and if I go to NDI, I'll be able to see any computer um, that has an NDI source or any device that's sending an NDI source. So as you can see, we've got a couple of computers here. I've got my computer that um, has Premiere Pro running on it. So that means that I can bring in live titling from Premiere or After Effects or different character generators that will support NDI. Now you can also see underneath here, I've got my laptop here. So I can bring in the, a particular input here from my laptop. So that's a waterfall playing on my laptop and I'm bringing that in over the local network. Now if we go back here, I'll try and add another input. Now vMix also uses NDI for our desktop capture. So I can actually load up the desktop of my laptop on this production here. So here I am running my camera into this production and then sending it to this laptop and then, then sending that to this computer over the local network. So it's going uh, HDMI from the camera to the computer and then NDI to uh, this computer here. So it's all very cool and interesting how it works and how you can send video just with Ethernet now uh, instead of having to have a big configuration. So the good thing with vMix is that not only can you receive NDI sources, you can actually send NDI sources as well. Like we showed before, I was sending my desktop, I was sending my output and different external things from this computer, this laptop here, to this other PC here. So um, in order to set that up, you go to the output slash NDI settings. That also appears in the settings section as well, as you can see here. Um, if you were using, using an older version of vMix, this is how you would find that menu. It's slightly different now in vMix 20 onwards. So as you can see here, I have a higher version of vMix, which allows me to send multiple outputs via NDI. I can turn them on and off, and I can select which input I want to send, and also anything additional. So if I want to send all my cameras, all my calls, all my audio inputs, I can turn them on and off here. And I can also choose to select the overlays on and off for the outputs. Now, there's a, going to be an in-depth video about this when vMix 20 is released, so um, keep your eye out for that. So if you need more information about NDI, I'll link it in the description. We have pages on our website and videos, and there's tons of videos and um, information on the NewTek website and out and about on YouTube and stuff as well. So we're going to quickly close that. So with the desk, the, here we go, that's a bad shot. Uh, with the NDI desktop capture, you can load it as a standalone um, program on your computer. So we have it listed on the vMix website, or um, it comes bundled with vMix as well. So you just search for desktop capture um, in Windows and you'll be able to find it. So that's really good for things like presentations where someone wants to bring their screen in, or for gaming as well if you want to send the screen of a bunch of different computers at a LAN or a competition. Um, you can send all those to one computer and just receive those NDI sources and use them like a normal camera. Now, one other thing worth mentioning is vMix call. So if we go to add input, right down the bottom, you will be able to see a video call section. So vMix call allows you to bring in a remote guest by using a web browser and a webcam and a microphone. So typically, like you would use a normal video calling program, um, on your phone or on your computer, you can use vMix Call to do that now. So all you need to do is give the person that you want to bring in on your show the password listed here um, or on your program, and then they can go to vmixcall.com, enter the password, and then they will connect directly into your live production. So this is really great for people that are, um, want, to, want to come in as a remote guest for an interview. Now you can just give them this, and then if they set up a webcam on their end, then they can come into your live production. Now. You can also connect vMix to vMix as well. So you can do higher quality calls if you go vMix to vMix directly. So it works the same way. Um, you can connect to a call or host a call here. Um, and so that's a really great way to bring in live interviews into vMix. Now we have obviously full vi videos and documentation about vMix call that I'll link below as well. 
So thanks for joining us today on this video where we've looked at the frequently used features in vMix. Now I'm sure there are hundreds of different vMix features that I haven't covered on this video tutorial and on this whole series. So that's why we have a giant knowledge base article guide, all of the help documentation that you'll ever need for vMix, and a full tutorial video series covering all the different features and things that you can do with vMix. If you ever have any questions about vMix, feel free to check out our website and send us an email via the support page. If you'd ever like a video tutorial made, just send us through an email via the website as well at vmix.com. If you'd like to keep up to date with all of the things that are happening here at vmix, just follow us across the social media. Our username is vmixhd. We're also always updating our video tutorials on our YouTube page, so if you subscribe there, you're able to keep up to date with all of the videos that we've released, including our vmix Fun Time live show, which is our monthly live show that we run. So thanks for joining us across this Getting Started with vmix tutorial series. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to go to vmix.com and send us through an email. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check the description to view any of the information and links that we've listed in this video. If you'd like to watch another video in this tutorial series, click one of the videos above.